everyone. This is another Freedom to Feel conversation. And today I am with Jim Marshall. So I will briefly introduce him and then I'll ask him to introduce himself as I usually do. So Jim Marshall is a human development engineer, the inventor of Septemics and several consciousness expanding systems. He's also the author of Septemics, Hierarchies of Human Phenomenon, Analysis, Prediction and Management of Human Affairs. So this is not your full bio, and I'll have that on available uh, below your video when this interview is published. But for now, in your own words, Jim, who is Jim Marshalls? Okay. Before I say that, just let me say, it's hierarchies of human phenomena. Uh -huh. You said phenomena, in case anybody's looking for the book. Okay. Yes. So I am the discoverer of hitherto unknown natural phenomena, which greatly aid in the understanding of people, from which I constructed a revolutionary practical system and published it in the book, Septemics Hierarchies of Human Phenomena. 27 years of direct observation has shown that this book will dramatically improve the life of anyone who takes advantage of it. As for my qualifications, I'm a polymathic intellectual whose areas of expertise include psychology, philosophy, theology, parapsychology, science, engineering, mathematics, law, literature, history, metaphysics, military science, political science, physical culture, education, organization, and music. And I hold a Bachelor of Science cum laude from City University of New York. Wow, <laughs> I'll have all the information also available. So for now, this platform was created to understand feelings and emotions. That was a curiosity of mine and of so many of us who try to control, manipulate, hide, escape from feelings, especially negative ones and or emotions. And we a lot of times fall short. So with that in mind, I have this opening question for you, Jim. Uh, okay. What is what would freedom be from the perspective of feelings and emotions? Actually, from a human point of view, rather than discussing this in uh, a philosophical open-ended view, in terms of a psychological human-oriented answer, I would say yeah. uh, it's the ability to not react. Hmm. The problem with most people is that they react. Right. And that's where all the negative emotion comes from and the negative behaviors come from. Yeah. Now, in Chinese, they call this wu wei, yeah. which means literally no reaction or non-reaction. But I think a better way of defining it is no reaction. Uh. So, so if you have some negative stimulus uh, and we get bombarded with it all the time, and you don't react to it, you can maintain your spiritual clarity and you can do everything from a place of love and kindness and generosity mm. because you're not uh, taking the bait that they're giving right. you. Right, I love that you're answer. <laughs> you're just letting it flow over you, you're not reacting yeah. to it. Mm. And this book aids tremendously in that because it gives you very practical, specific ways of processing data about people right. that give you an enlightened understanding so that it's easy or much easier to not react. Mm. Mm. So, so in a sense, this book undercuts that problem tremendously, very, very efficiently. I love the work of self-discovery and uh, self-knowledge. To me, that's the reason we are here uh, in a human body. So I really appreciate what you do. Uh, I love that answer too. Uh, a question that comes to mind is how do we don't react, but, but respond with the components that you just mentioned with love and kindness and understanding, because that could be a reaction too. So it, it could come across as a reaction. So how do we do not react, 
but also don't become numb, numbed. Some of us have done that. I have seen some human beings who have almost shut down all their reactions to anything that happens to them because they are already numbed and they don't have they don't have the ability to feel. And you know, you probably know that. I mean, I'm sure you know that from uh, the the psychology and the studies um, of psychopathy. So let me clarify a few points with specificity. First of all, as I point out in my book, reaction is inherently non-volitional. Somebody steps on your toe and you say, ouch. There was no thinking process there. Yeah. That's just a uh, reaction. Okay? <laughs> Response is what a person does who is responsible. Uh, yeah. So like if somebody comes up to me and says, you're a bum. I'm not going to react and say, well, you are too, which is what some people would do. Uh, I would say, well, I would respond. I would say, well, why do you say that? Right. Or, or what makes you say that? You see? Yeah. So that's the difference between respond and react. The other thing is yeah. the concept of Wu Wei, which I've been practicing for many years, <laughs> even before I knew those Chinese words, yeah. uh, is not about being numb. Mm, right. It's about being alert, awake, present in the yeah. moment, but not reacting. Right. You can observe it, inspect it, experience it. This is not about numbness. This mm. is about this is right. about being in uh, what you might call uh, an advanced spiritual state where mm. you experience things, you're there with it, you're not running away from it, you're not right. hiding from it. Right. Uh, you're just allowing it to be there, seeing it for what it is, and then deciding how you want to deal with it in a volitional way. Mm. That makes a lot of sense. It sounds very spiritual to me. So, and I see that uh, that background, the studies that you have engaged with, Bu Wei, I don't even know how to pronounce, but I have heard that before too, of course, and I have studied myself. So talk to me for a moment about Septemics. So what is it exactly? And what are these spiritual influences? Okay. In? So septemics is a philosophical science based on the fact that many phenomena related to human beings occur in a sequence of seven levels. Literally, the word septemics means of or pertaining to seven. Yeah. Septemics yeah. comprises a collection of scales or sequences, each of which breaks down various human phenomena into a hierarchy of seven steps. Each uh, of these, there are 35 such scales, each of which is unique, right. which is good because between them, they span the spectrum of human experience, by which I mean any situation which arises in the life of any person can successfully be analyzed by one or more of these scales. Mm -hmm. And that gives you a grip on understanding it and bettering the situation. Usually, pretty easily, pretty quickly. Yeah, uh, that sounds amazing to me if we are able to do that. One of the um, three studies, of course, it had, in my, my experience to be uh, from where I am now, not able to react it has, has a lot to do with spiritual practices like meditation and going deeper and deeper into the understanding of what is this that we call life all about? What is actually not all about, but what is it in the first place? And the deeper I go into it, uh, I see that um, it really seems to be uh, just the appearance of, of something, a phenomenon of, of form, but it's not really that is just happening in our own minds. So, but this is something that I often don't talk about, especially here, because that's going deeper into the spiritual concepts that I study. But staying with the topic of your book, I'd love for you to talk to me a bit more about the, um, the scale of spiritual identity. Okay, so I'll be happy to do that. But before I do that, I really should tell you people, your people, what this subject is Okay, because since it's a new subject, they have no frame of reference. 
Right. And there are 35 scales. I could easily talk for five hours on each one of those 35 scales. Right. I have to realize I spent 25 years writing this book, and that's after all the research that gave me the data. Right. So there's a lot of material here. So, so let me just say this, okay? So they have some frame of reference. Yes, of course. Each of these 35 scales provides the user with an infallible way of determining the salutariness or beneficialness of any group, individual, or activity. If the group, individual, or activity moves persons or groups up these scales, it's beneficial or positive. If it moves them down, it's detrimental or negative. Uh -huh. More importantly, just finding out what level you or another is at on any scale is by itself enlightening and beneficial. Mm -hmm. And finally, once you know the actual level of a person on any scale, you can improve that person, whether it's yourself or another, by moving them up one level at a time. Uh, uh, All of these advantages represent major steps forward for society. Each of these scales is an axis against which to evaluate human behavior. And combined, they empower one to understand, predict, and manage human affairs to a degree hitherto unattainable by most. Mm. The data in this book are vital for every human being and can help you to achieve your goals faster and easier by explaining what might otherwise seem to be inexplicable or random. Right. If someone were to invite you to a rendezvous, you would certainly expect them to tell you the date, the time, the location, and perhaps also how to get there. Right. Needless to say, it's very difficult to get somewhere if you don't know where you are, don't know where you're going, and don't know how to get to your destination. Right. Now, this sounds idiotic, but most people do this regularly, so much so that it's considered normal. That's true. For example, as a young man, when I started driving, long before GPS units, I was surprised to learn how many people did not know geographically precisely where they were, uh, nor how to get there. Right. So more often than not, my request for directions to the location of the person on the other end of the phone was requited by vague and often inaccurate instructions, which often did more harm than good. Right. I learned to ask only for the address and look it up on a map. Now, yeah. if this is so with physical locations, it's even more so with conceptual locations because they are abstract. Yeah. Most people wander through life aimlessly, so much so that mm -hmm. it's considered normal. Yeah. So they're discussing politics, career, romance, finances, health, you name it. Most people yeah. do not know where they are, where they're going, nor how to get there. Right. If you want to improve your or another's condition, these scales are extremely useful because each of them is a roadmap for some area of human activity. It enables you to find out fairly easily and quickly precisely where you are, where you're going, and how to get there given some specific context. Wow. Okay? So that's yeah. what this is about. Now, the next yeah. thing I really should do is read to you the names of the 35 scales, because that would give your viewers yes. information as to what are we talking about? What are these 35 subjects? Right. And you would see, when you hear this, you would see that I have covered the spectrum of human experience. Yeah, please. See that? Yes, okay. absolutely, Jim. Yes. Okay, so there are 24 scales which are primarily about individuals. These are the individual scales. Yeah. The scale of basic purposes, the scale of personal influence, the scale of choice, the scale of permeation, the scale of thought, the scale of identity, the scale of evaluation, the scale of motivation, the scale of control, the scale of stopping, the scale of scholarship, the scale of literacy, the scale of human ability, the scale of memory, the scale of identity, pardon me, the scale of spiritual identity, right. the scale of mental deletion, the scale of aberration, the scale of physical fitness, the scale of justification, the scale of belief, the scale of equanimity, the scale of attack, the scale mm -hmm. of conflict, and the scale of reaction. Mm -hmm. And these are the group scales, the yeah. scale of relationships, 
the scale of life mm -hmm. sphere, the scale of government, the scale of civilization, the scale of survival, the scale of management, the scale of exchange, the scale of communication, the scale of allegiance, the scale of sexuality, and the scale of politics. Wow. And I can absolutely guarantee any one of these scales by itself has potential to dramatically improve the person's life. Right. Because it takes each one of these 35 areas, breaks it down to the seven component aspects of it, and tells you what it's about. So you see, every person is at some level on every scale, whether you wow. pay attention to it or not. Think of it this way. Yeah. The heliocentric theory. Now, pretty much everybody over the age of 10 on Earth in the industrialized world understands the heliocentric theory, okay? Now, the heliocentric theory was first propounded 300 BC by Aristotmos of Samos, uh, and it was not accepted until 1800 years later when it was propounded again by Copernicus. Then it caught on, and now everybody accepts it. But before mm. that, everybody was living on a heliocentric planet and did not know it. Mm, right. It was the data was there, they just didn't know. That's what this data is like. I discovered this data. Later on, I can tell you how I discovered it because it yeah. tells you a lot about what it is. Right. And it's an interesting uh, anecdote as to how I stumbled across this. So the point is that uh, you can ignore this data, but it's much better if you look in the book and use it. Right. For example, every human being has one of seven basic purposes. Mm -hmm. Nothing is more important to know about a person, including yourself, than your basic purpose. Now, mm -hmm. of course, everyone has thousands of purposes. If right. you want to go out and buy ice cream, that's a purpose. But that's not a basic purpose. It's right. not the basic purpose. So when you find your basic purpose, it is an epiphany. Because what happens is you throw out the other six levels and you say, this is what I'm about. Right. You see, and then you know with clarity what mm. your life is about, and it makes it easier to live, and it's just as powerful in in evaluating other people. For example, I know the basic purpose of every president of the United States, going back to Franklin Delano Roosevelt, and many of the presidents prior to that, such as Lincoln, Washington, and Jefferson, who I studied. So. I understand these men very well because I know what the basic purpose of this person is. Now, I'm not gonna tell you what it is because I don't think it's ethical to, to, to uh, first of all, it's political and I don't discuss politics. But in yeah. general, I don't think it's wise to, dis to, to divulge other people's levels, especially anybody who's living. So I right. can tell you Joe, the basic purpose, but I'm not going to. Right, right. You look and figure it out yourself. It's not that hard. I have to tell you, this is extremely humanly data. And right. I'll give you an anecdote to show how easy this is to use. Yes, please. About 20 years ago, uh, this book existed in a transcript form. I was researching it. I was rewriting it. I was getting feedback. And uh, I was talking to a friend of mine, just casually, about politics and government. And I said to him, wait a minute, let me show you something. So I opened up the transcript to the scale of government and I handed it to him. Now he didn't know anything about my book. He didn't know anything about stuff. I just handed him the scale, right? I didn't, I didn't say anything. Yeah. Here it is. And he looked at it and in about a second, he pointed just like this, he pointed. He said, right <laughs> there, I'm right there. He found his level mm -hmm. on that scale one second without my even suggesting that that's what the scale was for. He didn't know right. that. Right. That's how user-friendly this is. So what happens mm. is I could just give one of these scales a random, stop some guy in the street, say, take a look at the scale. Yeah. And we look at it and realize this is a guy, he's not thinking about his mother-in-law, right? He's just out shopping. 
and he'll say, oh, I see. This is how my mother-in-law is. This describes her perfectly. Right. Get it, okay? And the reason he will get it is this is natural law. Hmm. Each of these scales has mathematics embedded in it. And anything which has mathematics embedded in it is now. Right. So this is just like mm. studying any other science. So for example, let's take botany. Uh, I could ask the person, here's a rose, a tulip, and an apple. Which of these two things goes together and which of them doesn't? Now, right. somebody who knows botany will say the apple goes with the rose because the, the rose and the, the same botanical family. Somebody who doesn't know that will say, well, the apple and the, uh, the rose and the tulip go together because they're both flowers. Right. So you see, this book gives you data that enables you to understand something correctly. Mm. So yeah. uh, because this is natural phenomena, it resonates with people. Nobody ever says to me, it's 27 years now since I sent a transcript. Nobody has said to me, I don't get this, make any right. sense, or anything like that. That's not what happens. What happens is right. people look at it and they say, oh, oh, I see. I see how this works. And that are 35 axes of information. Yeah. So... Whatever is going on with you, this will help you to sort it out. So, for example, let's say you have a friend who's having uh, a problem with a relationship problem, right? Very common problem. You can show this person the scale of relationships. Yeah. Just the fact the person sees there are seven levels of relationship will help them get a grip on where they are on it, where they're uh, mate is on it and it will unravel it somewhat you see right or you can show them the scale of sexuality i know for a fact if two people are not compatible on the scale of sexuality they cannot have a workable romantic relationship they can mm. be the smartest nicest people on earth you yeah. have to be compatible for that to work you don't yeah. have to be same level, but you have to be compatible. Right. So this explains why sometimes you have people, it just doesn't work for them. They're yeah. smart, they're idiot, they're nice, they're benevolent, but they it doesn't click. You see? Right. Yeah. Other people, it does click because they're compatible yeah. on that scale. So or yeah. or uh -huh. your friend could look at the scale of allegiance. Anytime uh, a relationship between two people deteriorates, what type of relationship it is, business, romance, whatever. It's always because allegiance has deteriorated, right? So a guy's going out with a girl, he cheats on her. That is a deterioration of allegiance. He has right. gone down the scale of allegiance, you see? Right. Yeah. So he can look at this and say, oh, I see. My allegiance to her deteriorated, and so I fell down the scale. He can find his level, and because he finds his level, he can then move to the next level and start to repair the relationship. Or, or, or he could look at the permeation. Permeation monitors love. Permeation is the basic action of a spiritual being. The reason that mm. you get permeation mm. from your body is that you are permeating it. You as a yeah. spiritual being. Now, when you die, you stop permeating it. So you don't get sensation from it anymore. Uh -huh. That is why when someone's blown up or shot with a bazooka or something, he dies quickly. It's horrendous. Okay? He leaves. Yeah. Okay? He leaves the body. You know, it's blown to bits in complete suffering. So... Yeah. He, he depermeates it. Now, when two people love one another, that's because they are permeating one another. Mm. When people hate one another, it's because there's no permeation. So, like, right. if you hate somebody, right, 
some horrible person who committed some terrible crime against you, you don't want to permeate that person. You want them as far away as possible. <laughs> yeah. Right? So, so this is just four examples off the top of my head how you could help your friend resolve her relationship problem. Now, this does not require spending any money. It does not require going to a therapist. It does not require joining a church. It does not require going to school. All it requires is you get the book. It's in three versions, hardbound, softbound, ebook. You get yeah. the book. You study it. You understand it. And you say to your friend, Mary, come over here. Let me show you something. Right? And you show her this material. And if you first have her read the glossary so she understands it, then yeah. you have her look at the scale in the seconds, maybe five seconds, maybe 20 seconds seconds in the seconds she will find she will say oh well you know i can see well i'm three or four see she just threw out five levels yeah. she narrowed it down that happens in seconds then you can say good let's have you read the text so we give her the book she reads the chapter and it explains in detail what each of these levels are what they mean how they work what kind of person is at each level and by the time she finishes reading it realize this is self-inspection, right? Yeah. So she says, ah, I see. I'm at level four. See, the light bulb just went on over her head. Yeah. So, so then you can say, okay, let's move you up to level three. And she will be able to do that because I have solved the gradient problem. Right. There are millions of people who have problems, but they can't solve them because how to. They don't know what to right. do. Right. They don't know the gradient. Now, let me tell you what I mean by gradient. Every competent teacher, coach, therapist, facilitator on earth understands gradients. Okay? So I have worked as a physical trainer. If you came to me and said, Jim, train me, I'd say, okay, I'm not going to just give you 100 pounds and say, go lift this. That's bad training. Right. I would look at you and say, well, you look, you can curl maybe 15 pounds in one arm. Here's a 15-pound dumbbell. Let's see how you do, right? And you would say, oh, I can do this. I can do about eight of these. I'd say, okay, good. So let's have you do this three sets on each arm every day. And then at the end of the week, I would come back and I'd say, how did you do? And you would yeah. say, well, I'm doing much better on this. I, I could do a lot more, you see? And then yeah. I'd say, okay. Let's have you do, let's see if you can do 15 times. Okay, that's gradius. Now, regardless of what part of humanity you're talking about, mentally, physically, emotionally, academic, scholarship, whatever, that's how you help people. I had a career of helping people by doing that. Yeah. And uh -huh. that, was, that was the magic that I used with every client. Finding the gradient and getting him to function at that gradient. Right. So now, I told you earlier about the story of how I discovered this, and this bears absolutely on what I'm saying. So you have to realize, I was accepted into an elite engineering school when I was 16. I was a natural engineer, okay? And I attended on academic scholarship. Now, by the time I had my Bachelor of Science degree, I was aware that I did not particularly want to engineer physical things such as electrons or airfoils or motors or gears. I wanted to engineer the human psyche because that's where we're failing. Mm, we have so spectacular true. technology. Okay. Yeah. One of the problems yeah. that human beings have in the industrialized world is yeah. not technical, it's human. Yeah. That's why we have divorce. That's why we have crime. That's why we have idiots running governments. Yeah. It's all because people don't understand people. Mm. So, mm. I then had to make a long story short. I had a long yeah. career as a human development engineer using engineering principles, engineering approach with clients one-on-one. -on -one. 
hundreds of clients for many thousands of hours, okay? And they all improved as a result of the work we did. Yeah. Now, started to notice, just coincidentally, that my clients were improving in ways that were predictable to me. Okay. Now, what I mean is that we would be dealing with something and I would know what the outcome was going to be. Right. Now, this happened so many times, I started making notes. I did not tell nobody right. about this because you have to realize I'm an engineer. I, my opinions and beliefs are not relevant. Okay? Right. I was interested in helping people and I was doing that. But I made notes because this was fascinating to me. So what I started to observe is that a person would be at a certain level on a certain axis, right? I mean, there's 35 axes. Yeah. And I would spot being at that level. And therefore, I would know as a result of our interaction, he would go up to the next level. And mm. even though mm. we knew nothing about this. Right. Now, this happened thousands and thousands of times. And the more it happened, I just kept making notes. Now, some would improve on one axis and other people would improve on another axis. Or yeah. the client would improve on axis A on Monday and on axis B on Tuesday. Right. So I started realizing there were different axes here. And I started noticing that my clients were moving up scales. These were mm -hmm. scales. Mm -hmm. Now, I didn't know what they were, came from how they, but I, I observed that that's what's happening. By, by about 1995, I had about 32 such scales, which varied in length between three and seven. Now, I absolutely knew empirically by direct observation that these scales were real because they just fell out in front of me. I wasn't even looking for them. I was like a guy walking down the street and I found a hundred dollar bill in my pocket. Yeah. That's what this, there's no theory of septemics. I just observed this. So in 1995, there was one scale in particular that I had that had six levels. Absolutely knew from many decades of direct observation that this scale was correct. It predicted things. I could nail somebody just like that on this scale. Mm. Person, see where he was, and then everything that happened after that corresponded to that. Right. Now, in 95, I discovered that it had a seventh level. And when I inserted that seventh level into this six level scale, it manifested mathematically. Mm. Now, you have to understand, I come from a hard science background. Yeah. I took 26 semesters of math and loved every minute of it. Okay. okay? So I think in math, mm. I have a mathematical mind. So when mathematics appears, I see it. Mathematics is going on in life all the time, except most people are oblivious of it. Huh, yes. Okay? So mm. when this six-level scale became a seven-level scale, all of these manifestations jumped out of it. It went from being linear to planar, meaning... It went from being expressible in a line, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, to expressible on what you might call a table or a spreadsheet. Mm. Because all of these mathematical manifestations presented themselves. Right. So I said, whoa, this is big. I found something. Right. And then being an engineer, I said, I wonder how many of these other scales that I have are actually seven level scales, but hadn't been developed all the way because I wasn't developing anything. Right. I was just helping my clients and making notes. Yeah. So I then, knowing what I was looking for, looked at these 32 scales. And in a short period of time, I was able to develop all of them into seven level scales. Mm -hmm. Now, 
as each scale went to seven levels, it manifested mathematically. Right. Because I didn't have pieces of it. I had the whole scale. So when I saw that I had 32 scales, all of which had mathematics embedded in them, I said, this is natural law. Right. I don't know what this is, but whatever it is, I found something. Yeah. This can help people. Yeah. In other words, I was using this data for decades myself because I knew yeah. it. Right. But I said, wait a minute. I can go from helping people by the hundreds, which is what I had been doing, to helping people by the millions yeah. by giving them this data. Yeah. So I said, this is a book. I have to write a book. Huh. So first version of the book was written, completed in December of 1995 as a transcript. And I sent it to colleagues of mine, all of whom had graduate degrees in varying subjects. All of them had a very positive response. That was a little bit of a surprise. They all said, this is great. They had different responses, but they were all extremely positive. Nobody right. said, I don't get it. What are you talking about? This is weird or anything like that. Hmm, yeah. And again, that's because this is natural phenomena. Right. So when you are presented with natural phenomena, it resonates. It's not something out of my mind. Right. It's something that exists in the world. So I then said, okay, this is exactly what I think it is. And I then became devoted to writing this in a book that would work for the average reader of English. Right. I spent 25 years working on this book. And the reason it took 25 years is, first, I had to discover the phenomena. Yeah. Now, most of the phenomena was discovered by 1995, but I did find three more scales as I was writing the book. Uh -huh. Then I had to take this phenomena and I had to use it, I had to engineer a workable, reliable, practical, philosophic system that would make sense and work all the time. Right. That took 20 years. And let me give you an example of what I mean by engineering the system. So I had these scales that I knew were right because I observed them. Yeah. Also, the mathematics reinforces it. When you see the mathematics in it, you know, it's like the times table. It goes 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18. There's no getting away from that. That's right. how it is. That's how these scales are. Once you study them, you see they are that way because it is inherent to the world that they're going to be that way. I did right. not make them that way. I just noticed them and wrote them down. Mm. I'm interested in helping people. Mm. I've had a lifetime of helping people. My whole right. life I've been helping people one way or another. Yeah. So, so I had this, this, these scales, but the question came up, what are these scales measuring? In other words, I have seven levels, seven levels of what? Yeah. Now I read to you a few minutes ago, the names of the 35 scales. Yeah. I did not know that yeah. 25 years ago. Right. All I knew was I had these scales and I knew they were correct. So I had to reverse engineer from the scales back to what axis it was. And that was not easy. Right, I can imagine. To, to figure out what am I measuring with this scale. Right. So eventually I did. And of course, as I was researching this, data presented themselves. Mm. Now you have to realize there are 35 scales, each of which has seven levels. That's 245 different levels. Wow. Each of them had to be verified. And as a greater challenge is expressed in a way that would make sense to the reader. Right. So yeah. you have to realize this is an 86,000 word book. So I literally went through word by word, using my lifetime of experience in education, looking at how are people going to take this? 
Are they going to understand this? And getting feedback between yeah. people who I gave the book to and seeing, you know, what questions they had. And eventually I got it down to a point where it is now foolproof. If you know how to read it reasonably well and you have any interest in improving yourself or your life, this book will work for you, period. It's just like a screwdriver. If you know what a screwdriver is, if you know what a screw is, no big deal. You can, you can show somebody, this is a screw, this is what it's for, this is a right. screwdriver, and here's how you use it, and that's it, he's got it. That's what this book is like. It's a sophisticated tool. Now, I did all the heavy lifting in taking these 35 axes and working out what are the seven levels here. So, for example, the scale of thought. There are seven levels of human thought, and they are in a hierarchy. This is extremely useful. So, for example, I'll observe somebody, yeah. and I can infer from what he's saying by listening to him what his level of thought is. Mm. See? Yeah. So, for example, yeah. uh, Sherlock Holmes and Mr. Spock are fictional characters, okay? Yeah. And they're characterized by their creators as having analytical thought, okay? Mm. That is level three on the scale of thought. Analytical thought. It's a different type of thought from, for example, associative thought. So you can spot a person, you see? So I can yeah. listen to somebody and see how he is thinking. And that tells me a lot about how upscale he is or how downscale he is. Right. Okay, just as an example, now take that and blow it up in a million directions and you get what this book does. Mm -hmm. So you can analyze any person, any situation to get a very clear understanding. Who is this person? What is this person about? Including yourself and others. Now, I yeah. want to specify, do not tell anyone his level on any scale, ever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Get him to figure it out himself. Because right. then he will have a realization. It's not something from you. It's something from him. Right. Now, the good news is this. Each of these 35 scales is expressed in what you might call a table or a spreadsheet. And when you look at it, the data jumps out at you. It's not obscure. It's not uh, inscrutable. It's accessible. Yeah. And it's accessible because it's natural law. Right. So uh, I have been involved in education since the age of three, continuously, my whole life. So I understand what's involved in getting somebody to understand something. You know, I did a lot of work as a tutor yeah. in many subjects. And what I learned is the trick is figuring out what the guy doesn't understand. That's not easy to do. Right. You have to really listen to what he says. Right. Come at it from different. And then I'll figure out, okay, I'll say, well, what does absolute value mean to you? Yeah. And he'll go, ha, 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 ha. And I'll say, okay, yeah. let's look up the term absolute value in a dictionary. And he'll look it up and he'll say, oh, okay, I see yeah. what it is. And then we go back to the math problem. And he says, oh, this makes sense to me now. So I've had yeah. a lifetime of doing that for myself and for others. And that's why I wrote this book. Right. I reverse engineered it to being a way that people are going to understand it. For example, I read to you the names of the 35 axes. Each of these axes is given a synonym. In other words, I say, well, it's the scale of X, but could also be called the scale of Y. So I'm giving you a synonym there to give you depth of understanding. Also, every single level of every single scale has a synonym. Yeah. So I tell you, well, it's, I'm calling it this, but you could also call it this. So that right. helps you look at it from another direction. You see? Right. Right. So you get, also, another thing I did is I put glossaries throughout the book. Yeah, there you is did. Not not only a glossary for each of the 35 chapters, there's even a glossary for the introduction. 
Yeah. yeah. So I am telling the reader with specificity, this is what the word means. Yeah. So for example, there's a scale of communication. That one scale alone, trust me, I've used this scale for decades with clients. Yeah. That one scale alone can dramatically change your life. Because mm -hmm. when you become a master of communication, you can deal with anything. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you how many fist fights I got out of because <laughs> of your ability to speak right. in a way that connected with the person, even right. with an angry person, even with a stupid person. Okay? Right. It's powerful if yeah. you know how to communicate. Right. So you can reasonably say, well, if you look up communication in a dictionary, it has like 30 or 35 definitions. Yeah. Which one are you using? That's yeah. a reasonable question. And therefore, I give you a specific one-line definition of communication. This is what I mean. There's no ambiguity here. Mm, yeah. I go through 35 definitions to say, well, is it this? Is it that? It's defined for you. Right. You know, I think it was Descartes who said, if you would argue with me, define your terms. Okay? Mm. That is what I've done. Yeah. I have made it easy for the reader because I give him the definitions. So yeah. when I say, for example, in the scale of motivation, one possible motivation on that scale is revenge. Mm. Okay? I define it. I even give a synonym for it. So you know right. exactly what I mean. So right. you're looking at the scale. You're choosing from among seven things that are de defined with specificity. There's no mystery here. Right. Because I got it down to the seven levels for each one of these axes, it works. So I could stop some guy on the street now. I could go outside here, stop some stranger and say, what is your wife's motivation toward you? He would look at me like I was from Mars. Yeah. <laughs> How could I possibly? Know? There are thousands of motivations. How do you know that? And I'd say, wait a minute. Actually, there are seven basic motivations. Mm. Here's the scale. And he would look at it and he would say, well, now that you mention it, I can see her motivation toward me is this. Right. Okay, so he found his wife's level on this scale. Right. I'm not saying he should tell her, but now he understands her better. Right. So let me give you a perfect example of how to use this. Let's say a guy's dating a girl, and he's thinking about marrying her, and he's not sure what her motivation is. He, he wants to know, does she really love me, or does she want to marry me because I drive a Lamborghini I own a yacht, I own a Learjet, and I live in a palace. Yeah. Completely different motivation, right? So he can look at these seven motivations, and he can see which of them it is. And that's the difference between marrying the girl because mm. he loves him, and breaking off the relationship because she's a gold digger. Right. So you see, 10 minutes with one scale can save this guy from a divorce that costs him $5 million. Mm. Yeah. And I can tell you from long experience in using this material, even before I wrote the book, I was using this material. Right. This material can save you from catastrophes, disasters, bankruptcies, divorce, mm. indictments, bad investments. All kinds of things can be prevented by knowing this data. Because mm -hmm. when you deal with a person, you can have insight. Is this guy a crook or not? Yeah. Is this guy an honest person or not? You know, what is this person's motivation? You know, how, how smart is this person? Is this person smart enough to really know what the market is going to do? Nice. So you can use this to evaluate the people around you and make critical decisions about whether you want the person in your life or don't want the person in your life. And if you want the person in your life, in what respect? And let me tell you what I mean by that. Mm -hmm. okay. I had a math teacher who was brilliant. He turned me from a kid who was good in math to a mathematician. Mm -hmm. big, big difference. 
I had this guy for two years. He was a genius at teaching math. In other words, every word that came out of his mouth was perfect. I understand it perfectly. And so I got very high marks. And I, that was the beginning of my love affair with math. Yeah. This guy was a terrible person. He was anti-Semitic. He was mm. a, a fascist. In fact, he might even have been a Nazi. He was not a nice person. Oh. He was not somebody who was for a friend. Okay? Right. But he was a bad teacher. So, mm. By using this book, you see, on his area of math, he was at a very, very, very high level. He knew it right. cold. He knew it so well, he could express it perfectly. Even though in other areas of his life, he was... Right. See? So, right. So that was an example of how I was able to get what was good by benefit from this interaction. We didn't, I didn't have to right. like him, but he made me a mathematician, which is why I was there. And I'll give you a, right. another example. Bill Clinton. Everybody knows that Bill Clinton is a brilliant man. He was a Rhodes Scholar. Okay? He graduated from an elite university. He is a very smart man. But if you look at the way he treats women, it's shocking. Mm. Everybody right. He is a serial observer of women. He's yeah. a serial adulterer. Serial, he's a racist. Okay, women have come out and mm. told their whole story on the air. Okay, so yeah. again, I'm not condemning the man. I mean, I, I like listening to Bill Clinton because he's so smart. Yeah. This trans into his presidency. He was the last that had ever to sign a balanced budget in the United States. Okay? Now you can say, well, he was forced to do that by the Republicans, but he was still smart enough to do it and give the American people what they wanted. Okay? Right. Yeah, he, he was reelected and he left office with a high approval rating. So that doesn't mean he's a nice person. That doesn't mean you should date him. Mm. So that's a perfect example right. of how you can you can use yeah. this thing to analyze this. You see? Right. Yes. Adolf Hitler, right? He's probably the most oh. despised person in human history, right? He was a yeah. psychopathic yeah. murderer, a genocidal murderer, an anti-Semite, okay? He he killed all kinds of people. He caused the deaths right. of 60 million people. Okay? Right. And he probably caused injury to hundred million people. Oh yeah. But, but if you look at him on an, on other scales, you'll see he loved his mother. He loved animals. You know the Nazis were the first government in history to pass laws against animal cruelty. Wow. But people don't know that. He yeah. was artistic. His art was pretty good. Right. Okay. Right. So I'm not saying I like the guy, and I'm not right. saying. You shouldn't despise him for what he did. I'm just saying, what scale are we looking at? There's 35 scales here. Right. Okay. So this is this is powerful data. Yes. It gives you a way to understand a person with depth. Go right. Um, we are we are almost at the end of the interview for today, Jim. I would yes. love to talk to you again. <laughs> the time factor. But I love your intention to help humans to know themselves and know each other and connect better in a beneficial way. And also, the more I listen to you and, and understand, if I understand satanics, is that also I see uh, levels of attention, too, because it seems like not everyone can be that maximum can reach the maximal level on all scales. It seems to me, I would love to talk to you more about that, to know who, uh, what human being has done that. It seems like it would be a miracle to me. But I love the, uh, the this component of attention, you know, just balancing one's life and giving attention to all areas, not just one area, 
as you said, some people can become amazing uh, professionals, mathematicians, but then they lack skills, basic skills in other areas. So it's more like a balance, attention type of thing, which I really see as natural intelligence, just being more intuitive and uh, uh, really, I, I really see that as intelligence because I see that in nature as well. As you said, you keep going back to nature, laws of nature, how balanced nature is. So human beings are lacking, seems to me, in balance, this understanding of what balance is. So would you like to make one last comment before we end today? But I would love to talk to you again. <laughs> this is it's fascinating to me. So basically, uh, this book is for anyone who can read English reasonably well and wants to improve his life or himself, okay? Yeah. Uh, no matter where you are, no matter where you're trying to go, these scales can help you to arrive more swiftly and less painfully. Right. Use the book by finding your level, which is your present location, on the appropriate scale. And that scale also tells you the next level up, right. which is your immediate destination. Right. And the next level down, which is where you will end up if you fail. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And it puts it all in the context where you have been and where you are headed. Right. Okay. So I love that sense of direction, yeah. <laughs> life direction. This, this, this is a tool. So you can yeah. use it for yourself or you can use it to help others. So I'll give you a, a closing example. Yeah. Let's say a parent's kid is having trouble with school. There's a scale of scholarship. This is a new idea. Nobody knows about the scale of scholarship. There are seven levels of scholarship. And I tell you, chapter, with specificity, how to make a better scholar. Right. Okay? It's right in the book. So right. the parent sees the kids having trouble in school. He says, come here, Johnny. Let me show you something. He lets him look at the glossary for the scale, right? Let's say the kid's 12 years old, so he can read, right? He looks at the glossary. And he says, okay, now look at the scale of scholarship. And the kid will look at it. And we'll say, oh, yeah, I can see that I'm either at three or four or five. He'll find a bracket right away. That's what happens. Then, see, he's already thrown out four levels. Then you say, okay, look, let's have you read this chapter. So the kid takes five or 10 or 15 minutes to read the chapter. Now he understands the scale. And he comes back to it. And you say, okay, now tell me which one of these is it three, is it four, is it five? And he'll say, all right, I can see... Now that I read this, I'm at level five. Mm. That's not so great. No wonder yeah. I have trouble in school. And yeah. then the parent says to him, let's move you to level four. And he will be able to do that because that's the next level up. He right. will be able to do it. If you mm. try to move him to one, two, or three, you would fail because it's yeah. too steep a gradient. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. So yeah. I have that solved sense. that gradient problem. So yeah. some, this is a parent anywhere in the world who has a kid having trouble with school and he just fixed it. Right, right. It, By it, himself. Yeah, I really thank you again, Jim, for this, for the work that you have put into it. Um, I know you have tried this before for many years, as you said, and I mean, it's just a lot of energy being spent in helping others. So I really appreciate you and this work for it. Thank you so much for putting all this energy in this time. Yeah, it's truly beautiful. So before we say goodbye for today, where can we find more information about Septemex, about your book, about yourself and, and your future projects as well? Okay, well, first of all, I invite all of your listeners or viewers to go to my website, septemex.com. S-E-P-T-E-M-I-C-S, yeah. where you can read what many readers have said about this. You can read what many journalists have written about this. Yeah. You can read reviews, and you can read sections of the book itself. Right, right. Okay? And then, once you do that, it's very accessible. It's very uh, easy to understand. It's presented in a pleasant way. You can say whether you want to do this or not. And then this book, you can find this book. It's available wherever books are sold. Amazon, Barnes and Nobles. If you just put the word Septemics in a search engine, you'll get hundreds of responses, including all the people selling the book. And it's on hardbound, softbound, ebook. You get the book. It's not expensive. And then you can improve your life. And there'll be some guy tomorrow who's seen this, who's in, I'm never going to meet, I'm never going to know his name, 
he's in the UK or Australia or Canada or who knows, okay? And he's using this book and he's gonna be saying, ah, I get it, okay? That's my reward. That's why yes. I did this. Yeah, thank and you. That's what I'm about. Yes, that sounds thank wonderful you. to me. <laughs> thank, to tell me thank you. Thank you. The fact that other people do better, that's what I want. Mm, yes, I'll have that link, the, the book link, and also your website on the interview profile. Thank you again, and we'll talk soon. Bye for thank now, too. Thank you, Maria. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.